Garrett Brown, cinematographer and inventor of the Steadicam. To start off with, can you tell me what invention is? What does invention mean to you? I understood and still understand invention to be finding something that's missing and filling that gap. Those are the two polar indispensable components. Filling a gap that is nobody's missing is stupid and finding one that you're unable to fill is, is hopeless. So to me an invention is that is the combo. It's identifying something missing and being able to fill it. How has passion played into invention? Passion passion has elements of of fierceness and joy, you know, it has elements of, of almost a, uh, obsessions swirls around in it. I mean, passion is something that you may almost do excessively, but you do for the reasons of, you know, joy and pain, you know, that come with it. Um, the language, the word is so debased in language and commercials and so on that I am almost I'm reluctant to even say it anymore. But yes, I have a passion for the moving camera. I, I love I love what happens when you move a lens someplace where it hasn't moved before or in a way it hasn't moved before. And that fortunately is a place I've been able to slide into here and there and do things. So why do some inventions succeed and others fail? An invention fails if it doesn't deliver something that somebody wants, if it doesn't do something somebody wants. There are lots of inventions that are, that are simply not sufficiently wanted or needed, and they're a great waste of time and money. And there are other inventions that you have an aching need and want for something, and the damn invention doesn't quite do it well enough, and that's frustrating as well. I mean, in some cases, you know, we wish to, f we wish to fly, personally. The airplane is a crappy way of doing it, I mean, in some ways. It would be great if there was some way that humans could fly level or, or ex, you know, rising in the same way that those notorious videos on the web show that guy with the wingsuit, you know, have you seen them? the wingsuit guy, you know, flying down off of mountainsides and skimming roads at 100 miles an hour. That's a taste of what it could be like. What's the balance between for the human spontaneity and guidance versus complete automation. Robots, at least of the industrial sort, are as far from spontaneity as you can imagine. They're, every aspect is programmed and arranged and so on, and that therefore repeats endlessly perfectly, right? The sorts of robots that will be interesting are the ones that will be autonomous and can figure it out and do stuff and be sent in, you know. And they're the ones that I would say would be a threat to the idea of workers. But at the moment, a human, bionically augmented especially, be, in order to be tireless brings a lot to this party you know that a robot brings very expensively the human bring, brings you know 3d manipulation ability judgment um, you know uh, judgment of the results in the process uh, quality uh, perception of quality um, and this incredible manipulating quality that we have you know, courtesy of evolution so if bionically augmenting somebody's strength or his endurance is sufficient to allow somebody to do this beautiful, you know, precise task and do it longer. That's a huge way along the way and very valuable and the next step costs a hell of a lot more money. Yes, a worker costs money over and over again, uh, but at the moment our industrial arms are, are in that slot. They're they are empowering people to do work that only people can do now without fierce expense. How do you know when the usage of an invention becomes art? When you are moved by what is done with it. When you are moved in the ways that art can move you. The invention of uh, the violin you know, became art when people learned how to play it. And curiously enough, the study can the same. You know, by the, by the time it is an instrument, strangely enough, and by the time somebody learned to play the study cam well, they they did things that had an effect, emotional effect on people. You know? 
That was exciting. You suggested that inventions should be part of every job description. Oh, I believe that. I really do. How do we encourage that and make invention more ubiquitous? Well, among other things, I think we try to teach it to kids as something you should do. In, in 1949, the census removed the word inventor from the list of occupations, believe it or not. I think partly because newsreels at the time were making fun of inventors and mocking them. And, you know, we teach kids to do all sorts of things, but we don't teach them to think about things in the inventive way. And why don't we, you know? It's, it's something that you should be alert for from the earliest childhood, that you should be conscious of, that when you do devise something new and fill a gap that you have invented. People do it without even knowing they haven't invented because we're not taught to be alert to it. You know? I'd love to see kids thinking in that way and growing up to be adults that think in that way, that solve their own problems. And acquire stuff for themselves that they want, whether or not it can be bought off the shelf. The process of doing it is absurdly easy. I mean, it's really ridiculously easy to get a machine shop to build you a gizmo, to sketch it. They'll help you get it made. You try it. If it doesn't work, you make another one. This is inconceivable to people who are watching their funds. But in fact, it's, you know, 30 bucks for an hour, and the guy makes a lot of stuff in $30 30 in, in an hour, you know. And then suddenly you've got something you can try, and, it's, and once you get into that, it's so exciting. You can't imagine how much fun that is. So our country's in a, somewhat of a mess right now. Yeah. What, is, what does the inventor's psyche have to do? What role will the inventor's psyche uh, play in, in getting out of this? Well, we, we need to be innovating more than ever, and we've innovated hugely in our history. We need to innovate, and we need to invent our way out of this because we've made a mess of the world and we have jeopardized many of the world's creatures and you know, the squid and the eel and so on, are, they don't have the chops to invent their own way out of it. They've got to rely on us to fix it. You know? um, we need to invent the green way to live on this planet. We need to invent a sustainable way to live. Uh, we need to invent a sustainable way to live. I would go a step further that at least can sustain the great large number of souls, or we need to teach ourselves to have fewer babies and, and shrink our population. The world would very cheerfully support 50 million people who would live like kings. For us to carry the, our, our 8 billion souls along, we need to invent, devise, come up with, and have the will to follow through on the rather not impossible task of giving people enough food, water, shelter to live a decent life and, and remain productive themselves. Garrett, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. It was, a, it was a delight. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks, Max. This is a handshake, folks. <laughs>